Hey everyone, welcome to part 26 in this FXS Lowrider Restoration Series. If you're first joining us, you could click on this link in the top right corner. It'll take you to a listing of all the videos. You could click on the first link, or whatever link you left off from, and continue from there. In our last video, we devoted time to rebuilding the starter. That included a complete disassembly, finding some things wrong as we took it apart, cleaning everything in kerosene, cleaning and testing the commutators, as well as pulling out the old brass bushing, sandblasting the end cap, as well as powder coating the entire end cap, pressing in the new bushing, soldering in the new brushes, testing out the bushing, as well as replacing the old bearing, Reassembling everything with the new brushes kit. Putting everything back together. And testing it out. In this video we're going to install the starter, the solenoid, the clutch, and tighten down everything in the inner primary. Let's get started. If you recall in part 24, the machinist took too much off the side of the engine. And I had to add some spacers in order to be able to fit everything properly. What I need to know is, with the primary on, does it sit too proud? So I need to prepare all of this equipment really quickly to be able to assemble everything. If it's a hair too little, I could always shim from the pulley on the inside. But if it's a hair too much, I'm going to have to take off from the back a hair. So we're going to have to get all this stuff cleaned up, as you see here. And I'll tell you, my footage of me cleaning and mounting the clutch hub was lost somehow. But I'm going to be removing it anyway again when I get the new parts arriving for the kit. So it really doesn't matter. Right now I'm just going to grease the bearings now that I got everything in. The whole thing was cleaned out with kerosene. So it's all degreased completely. Very light amount of grease is applied to each of the bearings. This clutch hub is about 10 years old. And I've had no problems with it in this dry clutch setup. I just apply the lightest silhouette of grease to the bearing surface on the inside of the basket. Place the basket carefully over the clutch hub, over the bearings, and seat it all the way down. And once it's fully seated, I'm just going to give it a couple of turns back and forth to evenly distribute that grease over the surface areas. And everything's smooth. I don't feel any wiggle, any looseness that would give me cause for concern. And this is our goal, getting this set up as quick as possible, just to make sure that the belt is aligned and address any shimming issues if need be behind the inner primary. With the 916s, I'll loosen the idler. With the idler loosened, it'll drop all the way down. This will allow us to get the belt on. I'll remove this nut and washer now and the outer guide for the belt on this rocket. And I'll have to pull off the clutch basket so I could get the belt around it. The inner primary blocks it. So I'll get the belt around those teeth, and then I can put the basket right back on carefully. Let the belt kind of hang. Once it's in, get it over the pulley, and then onto the sprocket, into the teeth, line it up, and we're good. Bring the tensioner back to a mark that indicates roughly its old position. Just tighten it down by hand right now. Put the washer and nut back on the pulley, but I have neglected to put the outer belt guide back on. That way I could see how much the belt will move back and forth. The guide will not inhibit the belt. With the belt set up square on the pulley, I'm going to rotate the clutch basket, which rotates the engine, the belt, and everything. Give it a couple turns to see how the belt deflects along the basket and the pulley where the belt rides on the basket allows for grace on both sides so i'm checking now to see where the belt is and it is pointed inward towards the motorcycle the question is how much and i'll tell you right now if it's like 20 thousandths of an inch it's an exaggeration it's almost dead on but the answer is somewhat inward on this maybe about 20 thousandths, well within tolerance. Most importantly, because it's on the inside, it tells me I do not need to make any adjustments to the spacers that I put on the inner primary as I installed it onto the engine so we can lock that down. 
if I did want to retest this later, I have a special 20,000 spacer that I could put right here behind the pulley to bring this out that would shore this side up. I got a feeling this will be taken up when the clutch hub is torqued down. Loom the chain back through the tranny sprocket, bringing it back around to the rear and temporarily connecting it together here on the sprocket of the rear wheel. Some may recall several videos ago that the chain tensioner snapped off and uh, I have bought a replacement but had no need to fix it until now. So I'm going to remove the old tensioner parts and replace it with these new parts. I'll drop the jack so the tension just comes off the rear axle. So we'll start the disassembly now. This washer looks really shady. We're going to back it out just enough to fix the high side. And as I push it back through, it allows me to gain access to the broken tensioner part, which I then just pull out. We can see where it sort of snapped off. The new one has stricter tolerance, as you see, and due to the deformity, probably due to not having one like this, it was bent. There's no way that this is going to fit, so I used some tools to bend it back out. I'm finishing it off with a file to remove any burrs, and I had also polished up the surfaces on that to remove any burrs. We can see it fits real nice now. I'd removed the threaded rod portion to work on it, so I have reintroduced it with some red Loctite. So now we're just reinstalling it like a regular part, everything now fitting perfectly. Push the bolt back through. I'll temporarily reuse the old washer, even though it's garbage. It'll be replaced, but for now, just for testing, it's fine. I don't even know which way it's supposed to sit, it's so bent. Put the lock washer over that, garbage. And then the bolt over that, and just not fully tighten it, just get it on there. Still need to do some basic adjustments. So we'll put the end cap on. And then we'll start drawing in the tension adjustment screw. Bringing in some of the initial slack as I draw this back. Do the same thing on the other side, bringing them back progressively so the tire comes back straight. This is not final, but I'm just doing it for testing. I'm using those two adjustments to set not only the chain tension, but to have it set up so that when I spin the wheel, you can see the teeth appear in the center of the chain. It's not leaning to the left or the right. In this case, not perfectly aligned yet, but this is, again, just a demonstration. Soon I'm going to need these forward controls for shifting, so I polish them before I put them back on the bike. When it comes time to tighten the clutch hub and this bolt that you see here, I'm going to want to have the transmission brought into certain gears. I'm going to need this to do so. So I'm going to run all these bolts back in. And as I do, there'll be one bolt that's blocked. And this is because I have a kickstand adjusting wedge, which I'm going to have to remove to tighten down this nut. And once these are tightened down, I'll loosely fit that wedge back on, but the kickstand won't go back on till later. That'll only get in the way. So now we'll connect up the linkage. I left the circ clip in here so I wouldn't lose it, so I'll remove it now. Now I'll put the linkage through here, put our clip back in. Make sure it's in position good. Line it up and then run the bolt back through have a chrome egg corn nut on the other side that'll cover it up we'll tighten everything down and that's it really the only thing is is this particular connection has some slop in here ray on the shovel head form has a part coming out to replace this finally the work inside this inner primary will be finished we'll start with these two nylocks loosening them one at a time I'm just going to replace them with new nylocks torque them down 22 foot pounds do the second one the exact same manner front two bolts require safety wire so they don't loosen up while the motorcycle's operating and cause all sorts of destruction inside the inner primary so I'm going to wire them up now don't really need a safety wire tool for this job but I already have one so I'm just going to use it why not just a standard two bolt wiring wrapping around the top bolt 
sort of an S shape to the bottom bolt, then wrap up and around again and tie it off. Stops the top bolt from loosening by pulling to the right, wrapping around, coming down, and then stopping the bottom bolt from loosening by again pulling to the right. With these two pieces done, we can move on to the clutch hub. We need to pull this seal out and clean out the nut. There's supposed to be two seals in here, but this one only has one. We're going to set up the press. Really simple with a bolt to drive it out. Shouldn't require a lot of pressure. Very little effort. There it is. It's gone. Have a look inside. There's the seal. So I'm going to spray the new seal. With a little bit of oil. I've already sprayed the inside of the nut. I'm going to set it up here with a socket and we're going to drive this one in enough to accommodate another one on top of it. So as we pull this one out we can see that it's driven in deep enough. Have a look around back and we can see that we still have some play here in the back so we're good. So I'll spray a little oil on the next seal and set it up up top. Set up our socket again. Now we'll drive this one down just under the chamfer. And there we go, the seals are in, the clutch hub nut. From the other side we can see both of them look good. That's done. I'm going to install the clutch hub now. I'm dressing the surfaces here with a little bit of anti-seize, using a little too much, but I'm going to clean that up later. The key also provided in the rebuild kit will be lightly coated as well. We'll place that woodruff key now evenly into position, making sure nothing's binding. It's a good fit. And I'm also going to put just a little bit of anti-seize around the back and inside this mating surface. And lower it in, aligning it with that key before I try and push it down. And press it in. As far as I can do by hand, nothing crazy. Just want to make sure that everything's aligned. We'll take a look and we can see the key is in the slot in position. This looks good. Kit also provides a new lock washer, so we'll bring it over the shaft now all the way to the end. We want to make sure that that spur is in the right position. Seat it in with a screwdriver so it's locked in nice. And then we'll take the clutch hub nut that we put the new seals in, reverse thread, tighten it in by hand, just snug. And with a socket and a small ratchet, I'm going to be tightening it down by hand as I secure everything. This is just to snug it. We're not talking it to specification yet. I'm spinning it around now and I want to make sure everything's true, that it's not wobbling that everything's seated real nice with this gentle tightening. And here's the old parts we've removed and replaced with the kit. In the last video we rebuilt this starter but there's still a problem with the top cap as well as a slight bend in the armature and I just decided to go with a new starter just to be safe so we're not going to use this one. We're going to remove these supplied nuts so we can take the starter housing that we have cleaned in the last video and mount it on the front of this. So we're going to leave these studs. A quick assembly demonstrates that the bearing is doing just fine inside the housing after it's soaked in oil. So I'll remove these parts now and we'll mount it to the front. See the two holes in the housing for this. The high side will point up. We'll push these studs in for now. And this top area where the cable connects will align to the high side as we lock this in. And then we'll twist the studs through and start screwing them in. Now just keep alternating back and forth between the two until it bottoms out and we feel tension. Torque wrench is set up to 90 inch pounds and both studs are locked down to that cover. Quick inspection is done. Everything looks good. The hardware removed from the front is put on the back for later use. The witness mark showed that at some point this gear was used in both directions, so it really doesn't matter what way it goes back in. The Bendix was cleaned out and inspected. Everything works fine on this, so there's no need to take it apart further. The one-way gear also checked only turns in one direction, so this is also good. All these parts are now ready for installation. 
This broken dampener is left on this bracket as a reminder to me and so of no consequence to the build. I've added grease to the bearing here and then I've used a stick to distribute it evenly amongst the roller bearings inside. I'm removing these two nuts off the kicker cover as part of the preparation. This is going to hold the bracket. The starter bracket will seat just like so. I'll also remove the hardware off the back of the starter. I'll be using a brand new gasket and a brand new oil deflector because I lost mine. Putting a thin coat of grease on this gear as a rust inhibitor. Also going to put some on the inside as well as on the teeth. But I'm also going to put it on the teeth on this to evenly distribute it between both gears. As I drop that gear down in here, everything inside is now lubricated. I place the deflector on, the square is facing outward. Put a little oil on it first, a little bit of the grease that's still on my hands to coat it. The pins line it up. So now it's on there. And then the gasket over that. I put a little grease on the back of the gasket to hold everything together. Now I'll bring everything together to the inner primary, aligning up the pins first and foremost. So everything is seated, gaskets together, and there it is, it's in. I'll just start this bolt, the one that comes from around the back of the primary first, get a couple turns on it. For added support while I work, I'm just going to drop that bracket on for now. I've replaced a spring washer on this particular bolt. I'm also using blue Loctite because of where it's located inside the inner primary. I'm putting this in now. My other hand, I'm also lifting up the starter. As I feel no resistance, I know it's in the right position. Screwing it in by hand. Coming around the other side, I'm alternating between the two as I draw in the slack. Eventually, I could use a ratchet to tighten them down. And I'm doing it by feel, tightening two aluminum pieces together. Then onward to the other side. As I finish off, starter will be in place. I'm checking the gasket, make sure everything's still lined up. I didn't mess anything up. Now we're going to put down some protective tape. Masking tape first, and then what I'm going to do is I cover it with duct tape. This is so the rest of the work I do doesn't damage that polished aluminum on the inner primary. So we could see just heavy layers of that duct tape laid on here. I know that stuff is going to touch this area, especially with some tests I can do with the oil tank. So I'm going to remove this bracket. I'm going to do an oil tank fitment test right quick. I know it's not ready for installation permanently, but I want to make sure that it's not obstructed, except for all these cables on top. You can see them getting caught, but that has nothing to do with what I'm testing here. So I'm just going to put it in from the side here, come around the other side and just drop the tab around. Then I'm going to turn it and straighten it that it's in its normal position and we can see there's no problem getting it in. I want to be absolutely sure before I proceeded we'll remove it now. The hardware for the bracket is now reintroduced. This includes the Nordlock washers that I took off the kicker cover. The Nordlocks will be retorqued to 190 inch pounds. And I'm just going to go progressively back and forth between the two until they click. For this side, I'm using a box wrench. I want to be able to see when the lock washer fully compresses, but I also want to be able to see that the stud is not turning. Now we have everything installed on this side. We're going to move over to the solenoid. And here's the solenoid I pulled from the top. And I just want to swing it over to the other side so we could get started with this, negotiating it through everything. Going to put down more protective tape on the inner primary, doing the same process as last time, just because I'm paranoid. And if I don't, I'm going to drop something on this and mess up the aluminum. This whole starter shaft unit is cleaned, greased, and tested. You see grease in this side as well. And now I'm going to put it into the starter housing. I'm able to move and deflect this out of the way, as there's no solenoid in yet, and get this into the grooves, pushing this all the way into the housing. It's now seated. The solenoid spring was cleaned and placed back in the solenoid. The new bolts for the solenoid were provided by my inner primary kit. The solenoid is placed over the plunger assembly and I just carefully rest it down. Bring the new bolt through the cover and solenoid and then through the spacer to the hole in the inner primary. 
and just start getting the threads through on the top bolt. Make sure it's not cross-threading. Everything's okay. Then I'll get the bolt started on the bottom hole. Finally, with both bolts in, I'll break out the ratchet, draw out the slack from both the top and bottom. Then I'll snug both bolts down at my discretion as it's going into the aluminum of the inner primary. We can see the solenoid and Bendix working together in a simple test. Nothing's binding. Very good. For those wondering why I still have this ugly-ass cover on the solenoid, I'm thinking of getting one of those starters where you go and pull the handle to start it, that little tiny crank thing. And I haven't figured out if I'm going to do that yet, but I want the bike running before I do that job. So I'm going to keep the old cover until I decide. I'm going to put the basket and belt back on now, so I'm going to remove the outer guide for the belt. I don't really need to put it on at this point, but there's nothing that says I can't, so I will. So I'm going to lay the basket down, and I've got to just get the belt out of the way or not in my way as I do that. And drop it over the idler, and with the idler slackened, of course, I could just get it right over the teeth. Just like that. Now just loosely affix this cover back on. We'll prepare to tighten down the clutch hub nut as I shift through the gears right now in neutral. I'll shift to first gear, which is entirely unnecessary for this exercise, but that's okay. And then I'll move into the subsequent gears, kicking up to second, and then third, and then fourth. We could see how it has to be moving to do this. It's not designed to just kick up and do it. So I have to hold it up as it locks into position, but that's okay. We want to get into fourth gear as the goal. And now I want to drop the jack in fourth gear. I'm trying to lock up the rear wheel basically through the transmissions. What's going on here? We can see that's locked up. Also, beyond this, we're going to use the back brake as well. I'm going to have my wife assist me. These brakes got air in them, so she's going to have to pump them up until there's pressure and hold them down. I'm going to set up this torque wrench to 55 foot pounds. And my wife and I will work together to lock down this nut on the clutch hub. Pump it. And then when it's tight, you let me know. Okay. Go. I'm still drawing out the slack. Okay. Thank you. You good? That's it. With the nut now torqued down, the locking tabs will be folded over. I want to fold over at least two locking tabs on this nut where it allows. So I'm using a flathead screwdriver to do this. I also want to look at the old tab and see how many I folded down last time. But right now, at least two. And with that, the clutch hub is complete. I found my old primary locking tool, which is going to make this next step so much easier. I'll use my small ratchet just to lock the tool into position, putting it between the teeth of both gears and then turning it towards the clockwise position. It'll fall into place. Now I'm going to set my torque wrench to just over 90 foot pounds. With everything held secure, I should be able now to torque it gradually up into 90 foot pounds to lock this nut down. Now the rear tire will be raised back up off of the stand. And with the ratchet, I will bump the engine in the counterclockwise direction to release the locking tool. I want to take the time to re-clean the clutch basket as I've touched it several times with oily hands before I proceed on to the next step. I happen to have a new pack of clutch plates, so I'm going to use these along with my cleaned up friction plates. With the first plate, I'm taking my time and checking for any burrs or deformities on the fingers here. Make sure that the hub doesn't have any problems that need to be addressed. From there on in, I'm just rotating washed and degreased clutch plates with the cleaned up friction plates. One after the other, after the other, after the other.
With everything in place, we'll now move on to the releasing disc. I first tried cleaning the releasing disc with some brake cleaner, but I saw that there was rust in there. I ended up going with a Scotch-Brite pad and degreaser. Really cleaned it up nice. So all I'm really going to need to do is blow this thing out with some air, and it should be good for assembly after it dries out. So I'll just slide it right over. And then I'll put on the special locking nuts, ensuring at this time that I see at least one round of thread exposed. The locking side is pointed inwards. And that concludes this chapter on this FXS Lowrider restoration. I hope you found it informative and entertaining and enjoyable. The clutch itself will be set up in the next video. Hit that like button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. And hit that subscribe button to be notified of more videos like this when they come out. When the next video comes out, a link will be posted on the top right. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?